If you make these three changes to your 16 and 8 intermittent fasting, it's likely all you'll need in order to lose weight pretty quickly. And if you're stuck in a plateau where you're not losing weight on 16 and 8 fasting, one of these three changes will likely get the scale moving again. Because these are the things that I did myself, as well as the people that I've coached. And we all lost more than 40 pounds in less than 90 days without ever having to track our calories or measure anything we ate. So let's talk about calories first, because this is the first key to boosting your fat loss with 16 and 8. If you're using intermittent fasting already, you likely know that the benefits extend far beyond creating a calorie deficit for weight loss. And even though you will be tapping into some of these benefits with 16 and 8 intermittent fasting, I like to think of 16 and 8 primarily as a tool to reduce calories. If you're only eating during an eight hour window each day, and then you're fasting for 16 hours, chances are you'll be eating less food than if you were eating all day long. And if 16 and eight fasting is primarily working for weight loss by creating a calorie deficit, then the less often you're eating during your eight hour feeding window, the faster you're going to lose weight. So while you can technically eat for eight hours straight, if you wanna lose weight faster, you'd be better off thinking of 16 and eight intermittent fasting as two meals a day or too mad. Too mad should be my rapper name. For most people, eating lunch and dinner is the easiest for their schedules. And they find that after a few days of skipping breakfast, they're no longer hungry in the mornings. And if you want to try this out for yourself, you can grab a free copy of my Jumpstart into Intermittent Fasting Guide, which is linked in the description. Because the first step in that guide is the same key here. You want to try to eliminate or at least reduce your snacking in between your meals. But what if you feel like you need those snacks in order to make it through your fasting. I need my snacks. If you feel like you need your snacks, 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 chances are it's because you're not eating the right foods during your two meals. So let's talk about what to eat next. When I first started to lose weight, I was controlled by food, especially because I would get weak and tired and really hungry in between my meals. I would get hangry. But over time, I learned that I was experiencing these symptoms because I was eating food that wasn't what my body actually needed for nutrition. Almost every time I've had a consultation with someone who's experiencing similar symptoms, it turns out it's because of one of three things. They're not eating enough protein, they're not eating enough healthy fats, or they're eating too many processed carbohydrates and sugars. And a lot of the time, these three things go hand in hand. That doesn't look right. I probably shouldn't do that. There's an interesting theory outlined in the book called Eat like the animals, where researchers posit that people will eat until they meet their bodily requirements for protein. And we will continue to eat food regardless of how many total calories are consumed until we get the protein that we need. Given that protein is also one of the more filling macronutrients, prioritizing it will keep you feeling fuller for longer. This is part of the reason why I lost weight when following a carnivore diet for 30 days. I simply wasn't that hungry eating a really high protein diet. Now the same is true of healthy fats. If you're getting really hungry in between meals, it could be because you're afraid that eating fats is going to make you fat and you're not eating enough of it. So prioritize proteins and healthy fats and minimize carbohydrates because the least filling of the macronutrients are carbohydrates. And carbs also trigger the highest blood sugar and insulin responses. So they also lead to the biggest crashes, which is what you might be experiencing if you're getting really hungry and shaky in between meals. The simplest solution to all three of these issues is to cut out highly processed foods because you'll be cutting out processed carbohydrates like sugars and breads, pastas, chips, crackers, and baked goods. Not only will eliminating these foods 
help to level out your blood sugar and your insulin, but they'll also boost fat loss by decreasing empty calories, increasing ketosis, eliminating food cravings, and reducing hunger. I've seen this happen time and time again with people I've worked with. If you're trying to lose weight, reducing processed carbohydrates and eliminating snacking in between meals, even without intermittent fasting, will lead to weight loss for most people. Because with 16 and 8 intermittent fasting, what you eat is just as important as when you eat. So if you're looking for less restriction with what you eat, you'll likely need to extend your fasting beyond 16 and 8. And while 16 and 8 fasting works really well early on in your weight loss journey, like when I used it to start losing more than 40 pounds in nine weeks, it does require a lot more consistency and discipline over time. So let's talk about consistency because this is the third tip, but it's probably the opposite of what you think. There's this funny, awful thing that happens when you stay in a consistent calorie deficit to lose weight. Over the course of several weeks, your body starts to expect that you're going to eat this smaller number of calories each and every day. And as a survival response, your body decreases your metabolism so you stop burning as many calories. And when this happens, you stop losing weight. And when you start eating more calories, you start to regain all of the weight that you lost. Then you decide that dieting doesn't work. What's the point? This is so much work for so little payoff. I'm just gonna lie down. I'm taking a nap here. Okay, take a nap right there then. I've seen the same thing happen when people stick with the same fasting window every day for weeks on end. Whether it's 16 and eight, or 20 and four, or one meal a day. If it's the same each and every day consistently, your risk of plateauing increases, which is why it's a really good idea to have an off day every week or two. Now, if you want faster weight loss, you can fast longer on your day off. Or if you're good with steady weight loss, or you don't feel ready for a 24 or more hour fast, you can have a day where you eat three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no snacks. You may see your weight increase a little bit after a three meal day, but over the long term, you'll see consistent weight loss that is less likely to plateau. So while you need consistency and patience to lose weight with 16 and eight fasting, you also need a little bit of variability so your body doesn't get used to what you're doing. So now that you've eliminated snacks in between your meals, you've cleaned up what you're eating Eating, and you've added a little bit of variability to your fasting routine, what happens if your weight loss still plateaus? Is it time to add a little exercise? Is it time to extend your fasting window? Should you just lie down and take a nap? Don't lie down just yet, because this video outlines a few more changes you can use when moving on to your next logical step, which is to- Good night. Good night.